So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to plant a burr root rose. Now in October, November is what we really class as burr root season. And to be quite honest, I think it's a bit early this year. I've been sent this burr root rose from David Austin. And um, I've had it a couple of days now. And it gets sent in a bag. Burr rooted by burr root. What we're talking about is this. <clears throat> so that's burr root, and they basically dig those up out of the field where they grow them, and then they get sent out to whoever's ordered them. Now, November's traditionally the best time, but this year, for some reason, I've got this at the end of October. But you know, we'll we'll go with that. We'll run with that. Um, now, the reason you buy them burr root is because you can get them cheaper. Uh, in this case, I think it's about a third cheaper I managed to buy this one. And this one is called Rosa Moisei, and it's one that I've bought for the Cloister Pergola. Now, it has to go in to the ground pretty quick when you bought these things. Um, but the recommendation is that you put it into some body of water, and in this case, I've put it into a bucket of water, and leave them in there at least a couple of hours. Now, this one's been in here for, well, overnight, basically. So... Uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how I'm going to go about planting this and where I'm going to plant it as well and what things I use when I'm planting it. So this is the position that I'm going to put it in and I'm going to put it up against that uh, bar there. That, this is the cloister pergola as you all know. Uh, and Rosa Moisea is a really nice wild looking rose that's uh, geranium red I guess they could call it with single flowers and it's more of a, a wild species type but it has this elongated rose hip that I really really like. I've never grown it before but I really fancied growing it on here because I've been doing a bit of hunting around to see what would be more appropriate and I decided that Rosa Moisei would be the best for this. Can make uh, about I should say 16 feet quite easily but I've got enough space here to be able to spread it out and for it to go over the top as well. So it should be the ideal rows that I'm going to put in. Now, at the minute, I've not prepped the ground. So what I'm going to do is prep the ground uh, and then show you how I go about planting a burr-rooted rose. What I'm going to use as well, while we're on the subject, is going to use this. This is uh, mycorrhizal fungi. And what this basically is, is it's a kind of a conduit between the soil and the microbes and the root system. Uh, and what you do, I'll show you what I do later, but anyway, basically it, it makes the plant um, able to easier take up nutrients and things like that. So, uh, and, and according to the back of this, it creates a better root system. Yes, it does. Increases uh, water and nutrient uptake, strong healthy growth, abundant blooms, etc etc so uh, it, it's really a good thing to do now I never used to use this stuff uh, but I decided on this occasion I'm going to buy it and we're going to try it I've had burr rooted roses before and I haven't used it on them so if you are planting the burr root rose don't worry if you haven't got any uh, just just uh, go without it so I've now dug the hole uh, and just just so you know most David Austin roses uh, actually come with a little booklet which is really handy uh, I don't really need this but I always I always refer back to it make sure there's nothing I've forgotten and in this case this is the planting guide that you get with it so if you are new to planting roses which I'm not then it always helps to read that little booklet that comes with it so what I've done is I've cut the actual hole or dug the actual hole to make it look correct uh, for the root so hopefully you can see that. Uh, you can see the roots sit in that. Now, I've, I've already dunked it into there because, again, I'm on my own working this and I'm doing it on my, on my own, so nobody here to man the camera for me. But basically, what you need to do is that knuckle joint down there, that needs to be about two inches lower than the soil. And mine's maybe a fraction lower than that, but I am going to release it from this wire and it'll pop up a little bit from that now it's recommended that you use a cane but to be honest with you i'm experienced enough to not even use the cane and as you can see here i think i've got it spot on so i'm using this plant this is a bit of a solid ego actually that's gone over so if you've got anything like an old plant you can use as a, as a guide and that that is simply there 
so that I know exactly how deep that is, that knuckle, because we need that knuckle to be under the ground. Now, with the guide, you need to put the mycorrhizal fungal on. Let's show you. We get a little bag. You're going to have to bear with me on this one because I'm having to tear this bag apart to get this uh, stuff out. And as I said, there's nobody here to help me. Right, okay. Right, let's have a look. Oh, this is the good stuff. Right, so this is the mycorrhizal fungal in there. There it is. Now, because it's been wetted, this, this fungus, or uh, fungal stuff, fungi, mycorrhizal fungi, should adhere to it quite nicely. And basically, as you can see, all you do is you put it on there like that. You get it onto all the roots it will go onto. Don't worry too much at this stage. Just try and get as much as you can on it. It all helps, every little helps. Um, so it'll stick where it wants to stick. And as you can see, I'm probably wasting more than I'm putting on. But I don't need this anymore once I've used this rose. I'll probably use this for some shrubs, the rest of this mycorrhizal fungal. So I've done that. We've put some on like that. I'm not worried about how much I've got on that. Because what also I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to the hole. So we're going to put some more in there. Inside that hole, it's going to be all over the place. We're also going to mix it into some of the topsoil. So here we go, bit into the topsoil. Not going to put all that topsoil back in there um, because what I've got as well is, I've got it in this bag here, but it's actually Plant Grow UK, what I've got in here. Um, and I'm going to add it into that as well. So into that bag there is going to go some more mycorrhizal fungal, uh, fungi. Now, the thing is, you really, really should put um, some well-rotted manure or, uh, as in my case, I'm using plant grow, which is this stuff here. So it's really nice. And that will go into the bottom of the hole. And I'll do it how I usually do it. I'm going to throw it in. I'm using one hand at the moment, so it's a bit difficult to do this very quickly. There you go. Well, going in. And as I'm putting it in, I'm also going to include some of that mycorrhizal fungal. And there you go. So I'm dropping it in, just nilly-willy, all over the place, a little sprinkling. And quite a lot of the sprinkling in it, let's face it. So we're going to put that in, so that'll come into contact at some point with them roots. The roots, as I said, I've already got it on. There you go. You can see it's already on. I've got to be very careful here, because Rose and Moisey Eye is very, very spiky. And although there's only three, four stems, uh, it's a spiky beast. So, because I'm doing this one-handed, I'm going to push it into the hole. There's one or two little rocks falling in there, but I'm not really bothered. And then what I do to assist me, if you haven't got anybody to help you, and as I haven't, I'm using that to hook it under, and then I can rearrange the roots inside. Now, try and spread these roots out as evenly as you can, or as equally as you can. So I'm just pushing them around a little bit and then that's all right now what I like to do is I've got the bucket of water here so what I like to do I like to put loads of water in as well so just bang a load of water in don't worry about it soak it get it soaked and again here's the magic well according to these people Throw a little bit more mycorrhizal in there. Some of it's sticking back onto that. Uh, oh, I've washed it off. The, I've washed it off, Anna. <laughs> so I'm going to have to put some more on there to wash it off. So there you go. Don't worry too much about that because it'll be fine. Now, what's recommended is you actually mix some good manure in with that. And as I'm doing this on my own, this is very difficult to do. So what I'll do is I'll turn the camera off in a minute and show you the results once I've done it. But basically, you fork it in. So obviously I need more than that in there. So you bang a load in, get more in there. Just fork it in nicely. There you go. So basically you're looking for that kind of um, sustenance, really. That'll be really, really nice. If it looks like that, you're nearly there. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to backfill this whole, um, the, the whole hole that I've created. And it's full of water at the minute. Don't worry about that. Roses are very good with water. Now, again, look. So I'm checking with this stick. 
on my solid ago to see just where this is and it's approximately two inches lower so I'm again pretty good easy to do uh, and now what I'll intend to do to start with I shall throw a few handfuls of the good stuff down there because this is a, a mulch really what I'm putting in here compost would probably be better but this is more of a mulch so we're not too worried because it'll do the same trick uh, well rotted horse manure would be great uh, a pre-mixed rose mix would be even better you don't want to spend money on it go down to your local stables and see if they can give you some rose manure um, horse manure and make sure it's well rotted so it needs to have been rotted for at least a year that would be the best okay so we'll backfill that and we'll get back to you so i've now backfilled it i filled it with both soil from here that's where i've dug out already and with some plant grow mulch it could be compost it could be a bag of compost it can be the pre-prepared rose compost doesn't really matter but get some rich stuff in there i've given the full bucket uh, of water in there as well so that's really well soaked in now and that'll give the uh, the roots a chance to establish themselves better and especially as this is now friable within it including the soil the roots should take better so my camera works terrible today now ideally i would have got that piece there a bit closer but i'm not worried because what will happen is uh, let's see if there's any already growing there'll be some regrowth of this plant and it won't be too long now before it's starting to um, to actually show some new shoots coming out of there and then what i can do with those shoots is i can guide them up the wire and away so over the next three or four years this should start to cover completely all of this framework and it'll look fantastic so <clears throat> that's basically how you plant a burr root plant so we'll, we'll go through the process again of what we've done. So we've kept the plant in a bucket overnight, whereas a couple of hours is usually okay. Uh, and do leave it in the bucket as soon as it arrives. It will arrive in a plastic bag. Uh, and David Austin roses do just that, but there's uh, they can be put onto the compost heap afterwards. So they're good. Um, you need to dig over the soil. In my case, I had to dig out this section because this is where I wanted it. Dig an hole big enough for the roots to go in. Make sure you do that. Make sure you dig that hole well big enough. Test your plant inside there be, before you go any further with it as well. So make sure your root sits in that hole nicely. You break up the soil at the base as well. Make sure that's quite important that because that allows water to soak down as well. So at the bottom of your hole, simply get your garden fork like I did here and rake, um, fork it in. Fork the bottom of it, break it up uh, and that gives you a better chance to make the roots settle better and you put your mycorrhizal on the actual root system itself and then you can throw some in the hole as well and with me i actually put some onto the soil as well so i've mixed it in all over the place really and i've, I've probably overdone it but it'll not hurt it and not do it any harm at all better too much than too little don't forget use yourself a cane or in my case i used this dead plant to gauge how low that knuckle was and that needs to be about two inches under the surface that knuckle you'll see it you'll you'll know what i'm talking about when you've got your burr root rows make sure that's underneath okay then you backfill with whatever you choose in my case as i keep saying it's plant grow uk uh, they are online if you want to search them out they produce some good stuff and they will uh, deliver it to you as well or they do a mail order service so uh, you can also put some of the original soil back in, but what I've done is I've I've put all the plant grow around the top as well. It just makes it look nicer and it allows water to get in there a little bit quicker. And then after that, the most important thing to do, which I've already done, done just before I put the top mulch on this, I gave it about four gallons of water and I just poured it into the hole. So that hole is actually absolutely saturated now. Uh, and that's it, really. That's how you grow your plant or plant your burr rooted uh, plants, any plant, this, this refers to any plant really, burr root trees, burr root perennials, but roses in particular are really good for this. You can save a lot of money by buying them burr root. Now is the time to hunt them out, see what you can get. Uh, this one wasn't burr root when I planted it, the rose back there with the white on it, that Starlight Symphony, 
with the beautiful orange hips and they look great and this Rosa Moisea is going to have something very similar but, but more red the hips and the flowers will be tiny and they'll be tiny red ones and they look fantastic and it's a really good choice uh, most roses turn up with four of these branches a good company will produce you with four or five never less than three of them so look for that that's a good quality uh, plant it water it keep your eye on it just let it do its thing it's now october nearly november so it's a good time for it to establish it's got plenty of time and before we know it we're going to have a super plant growing over a bit like the one there so there you go how you plant your burr rooted rose uh mine's from david austin he is online he's one of the best in the uk uh, and as i said you will get um a little booklet let's show you it you get a little booklet to give you a, a guide on how to plant these things i've been doing it for many many years um, but i always refer back to the guide just to make sure i haven't forgot something because at my age you do <laughs> anyway right hope that's helped you any advice you need contact me over youtube and i'll be happy to answer any questions that i can Talk to you soon. Ta-na.